Not a lot of what we would call overt evidence uh, that people were lesbians in the time prior to that because relatives or others would destroy the, uh, any evidence that people had lived lesbian lives and because many photographers had to stay closeted in order to survive and earn their living. Um, so I had to visually read between the lines, as it were, uh, to use my own experience and instincts to reach beyond all the coding and euphemisms and outright denials to take these images around and say to people, these were probably lesbian photographers. Um, so, I traveled uh, all over uh, North America, encouraged by my friend and dear colleague, T. Corinne, who also had figured out that if you travel around with a slideshow of lesbian images, it's really fun and people love it. And she did a show uh, about er erotica and, and illustrations and lesbians throughout history. So we complimented each other and she was very generous and she basically uh, taught me how to do this, which then really became the way that I supported myself, um, such as it was, on the edge of financial ruin constantly, because, you know, being, being a professional lesbian photographer was never on those little vocational tests. So, you know, what would you be good at, you know? Um, so, I got to take these images so they would be easily accessible to people. It would be affordable because they didn't have to print a book. You could pay five bucks and come to one of the shows and, or less or more, you know, wasn't much. And it was wonderful for me to be the bearer of these images because, you know, there was, uh, people had never seen them before. So we're gonna see images tonight of Alice Austin that have much more uh, you know, those of you who know Alice, you will have probably seen most of them, but Im imagine you're a lesbian and you're sitting there and you've never seen them before. And people would go nuts. They would love it. You can hear on the tape, people are laughing and ooing and eyeing and, you know, I thought I might never get another chance to go around and do this. So the show went on and on and on and on. It was a two and a half hour show. <laughs> There were, in the, by the end, I kept adding pictures because I would give workshops for lesbian photographers after I did the slideshow, and I would say, bring your pictures. And I saw a lot of pictures of cats. But I also, I also, there were some great photographers out there, and I would add their shots. Uh, I don't like to say shots. I would add their images to the show, so it got longer and longer. And um, so, as you know, I, I didn't bring you all of that, but uh, I am going to try because the uh, interest in it has sort of revived, so I am going to try to figure out a way to digitize the whole show because the reason we're having the authentic uh, in the carousel you know, throwback technology is because, you know, it's been dormant uh, for all this time and it really should be digitized. So if you all know an angel, send the angel my way. So, uh, at the time I was doing this, my other motivation was my belief that being visible was a way of building community. And I've always been a political person. I just sort of backed into being an artist. And, you know, I knew that people who feel rootless and have no history and can't place themselves in community, both historically and, you know, in their contemporary lives, 
aren't going to be a political force. You have to come out of the closet. You can't organize in the closet. So I would go around, and I, I took great risks at all my slideshow. I would say, you know, everybody has to come out on their own time, in their own way. But a lot of people say, well, I can't come out. It would kill my parents. Would everybody whose parents died from their coming out please raise their hand? <laughs> <laughs> and I did that 80 times, and nobody ever raised their hand. <laughs> so, um, there were risks to coming out, no question. You could lose a lot. You could lose your kids. You could lose your job. You could lose your house. So, I didn't. You know, I, I, I appreciated the risks, but I also appreciated that sometimes we thought they were greater than they were. So I was encouraged, it was a political act to, to take this slideshow around. And um, later we called this empowerment. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, The other thing that Sophie said in her Aperture article in discussing my efforts to reinterpret these historical images, I'm going to, I'm going to quote her because if I say this about myself, it's worse than a humble brag. Um, she was talking about my efforts to identify more concretely visual elements that might characterize a lesbian photograph, what, what later people would start calling lesbian semiotics. I would <laughs> never call it <laughs> semiotics. But she said, quote, it was important to note how radical it was to even publicly contemplate a question like, is there a lesbian aesthetic? So, I felt good about the fact that I was doing this radical thing that has certain resonance now and all I wanted to do was see pictures that made me feel good and bring them to other women so they could feel good about being lesbians as well. So if you feel like you want to do something, please do it. Um, this show was created for and presented to lesbians. I went on to do other slideshows that were more broadly for the LGBTQ community, but you will hear that it was for lesbians. Um, you know, when I brought it around, there were no lesbians on TV, there was no social media, there was no nothing. So I was like the queer Chautauqua, you know, I got to <laughs> take it all over and it was... You know. Uh, also, because it's an old show, uh, the people were very patient watching it. This is another way of my saying to you, you will find the pace very, very slow. <laughs> it's like a foreign film, <laughs> you know? It doesn't have the you know, boom, 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 that we have now. So I hope you will also be patient. And uh, I will do my best, as I said, not to interject, and we can have interjections after I finish. The segment we're going to see is just the Alice Austin segment in the Dyke Show. This segment was preceded by a segment about the photographer Francis Benjamin Johnston who was a contemporary of Alice's and who was also from Washington, D.C. and also a photo documentarian and also, I believe, a lesbian. And it is followed in the Dyke Show by a big segment on Bernice Abbott, who you may be familiar with, who is a marvelous photographer who is no longer with us. But here's the thing. I did, I was seven years old, eight years old, 
when 